Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Duff Dog and I are gonna, we're gonna see if we can't get a Ford flathead to stop them overheating. And by the way, Happy New Year. You know what I said I was gonna do in 2023? Obviously we filmed this in 2023. Happy 2024. I said I was gonna finish some projects, starting with the F1. Yeah, it's still there. Don't worry, we got a Pontiac project and we got Model T Roadster project and another Pontiac project and another 39 Chevy. Still got Bernie all reliable, but here's the dealio this week. We got ice sliding off the roof because we just came through a huge ice storm about 3 34 o'clock on Christmas afternoon. Power went out, huge ice storm. Chin asked me for pics or steal them from the Instagram. We lost power. We got a 15 kW generator going. Last year I saw it, we had this happen last year. Uh, I sized it out, we need a 35 kW. So uh, help me out, go get some Mordski merch. We got the Cinco de Drinko cap competition, the grubbiest cap competition. You're gonna get some, win a bunch of really great things if you get a cap and get it as dirty as this one. Uh, we got shirts, we got magnetic screwdrivers, can koozies, all that. Go check it out, Mordski.com. You know what, I think we'll even run a New Year's promo. So we're gonna give you a nice discount if you buy something the first week of the year. Start your year off right. But anyway, long story short, we don't have enough juice, so we can't run the hoist up and down, so we can't do anything on the hoist. Everything outside is covered with ice, so if I need parts or if we bring something in, it might take a while. We can't run the air compressor because that's 220. Uh, we can't run all the lights in the shop. We can only light off this one half of the shop. At a time, we can't run the waste oil furnace, so we're just running off propane heat. It's warm mission here it's fine i'm in a t-shirt i'll be fine but anyway i shot this footage earlier on my 36 ford pickup some overheating issues so to help with all the stuff that i've been dealing with behind the scenes also check that out at the end of the video we'll have all the shenanigans we got to deal with up here with our snow issues but to help me out with filming uh chin was traveling this week because it's it obviously christmas week and he got kind of stuck back home and took longer to get back home but anyway to help us out we had some footage that we shot previously on this pickup trying to figure out how it overheats so let's jump back to that Bring it to you. this is my 1936 ford pickup it's got a 41 ford pickup drivetrain underneath it it was a factory four-cylinder pickup the 41 was somebody converted a v8 it was a one-year only deal weird anyway it's got a flathead v8 in it Pretty much the same thing as what this thing would have came with. Just a little bit newer version. It's got hydraulic brakes. It's lowered. It's got dual exhaust. Uh, the old Chevy Holler. Go check him out on the uh, Instagram. Uh, holler at him. Tell him he needs to get his YouTube channel back up and going again. But he just did a bunch of work on this thing for me because it's little piddly stuff that I hate doing and it's stuff that doesn't make very good content. And uh, yeah, he does good work. So he just converted a 12 volt. Uh, still got a generator on it, but he made it a 12 volt generator. Wired up all the lights. Uh, put a dead man switch in it doctored up the brakes a little bit for us put the dual exhaust on it just a bunch of stuff that need to be done put window regulators in it and glass in it and uh this thing drives really good but it overheats in about a mile and a half or two miles she's pushing like 200 210 220 and that's not even running it hard and it's like 35 40 degree weather around here right now so we gotta fix that. He said when he put, oh yeah, it had flexi hoses on it because I just whipped it together quick and that's what I had and that's what was on this engine when I got it out of the 41. And he put regular hose on, he said that uh, coolant looked a little. Yeah, what does is, what is our pal uh, Ernest say? Ew. That wasn't his exact words, but Chevaholic said, maybe try flushing it. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Flatheads like to overheat. If you wanna check out ways for Keep your flat from overheating. Go check out uh, Matt at Iron Trap Garage, his uh, YouTube channel. They did a video on keeping these things cool. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flush this thing out. These things were notorious for having a bunch of sand in the block and stuff. And we might have to pull the heads to clean that out. It's got new water pumps on it. Uh, the radiator is a mystery radiator that I got out of, either came in this or something else. Uh, and they're not a pressurized system. So that doesn't help out the situation as well, but uh, we got good water pumps on it, so we know it's not that. It runs good, so it, it shouldn't be the timing or anything like that. Uh, it shouldn't be getting too much fuel because it's just got a standard uh, 94 Holly on it, but let's uh, drain this thing and let's flush it. And then we'll uh, take it for a little ride because it's decent-ish out today. And we'll see if we can't uh, get this thing to not push water all over the windshield that's what it does like i said these are not a pressure system so you don't fill them all the way to the top well you do 
I made a new nice little quart gasket here. I haven't made one of those in a while. We tried getting this screw loose. It's a brass screw. And uh, that was to no avail, so we just made a gasket put on there. And it leaks out right here and then goes all over the windshield. It's not so good. This hood is not so good either. We gotta screw it back together. And it doesn't fit the contour of the body real well. And when it was overheating, it was without the hood on it. So we should have that much more air moving across it. And it's got a fan, so who knows? Let's get this hood out of the way and let's drain the radiator. I just want to get this thing flush so I'm going to take it out in the spring. It's ready to go. It's the old driving season. It's November in North Dakota, so it's pretty much over. Should be, but we keep driving. So there it is, even but some nice Ford radiator hoses. I'm guessing he had to cut those and then put a chunk of exhaust pipe in there to splice them together. And somebody has modified these upper necks on this radiator hose but the cores don't seem to leak so uh we got that going for us there's a little petcock at the bottom of the block by each water pump flathead's got two water pumps there is no thermostats in there so maybe the water's going through the uh, radiator too quick i don't know that's kind of my theory is you want to have a washer or something there slowing down the water but some folks say nothing in there works great i don't know Let's get this thing drained. Don't worry, guys. We'll definitely do it in an environmentally friendly fashion. How dare you! Of course, the manifold's warm because we just drove it in. And there's so much sludge that it's barely trickling out. I'm gonna crack the other side here as well. Hopefully, it drains twice as fast, right? And nothing's coming out. Great, grand, wonderful. Good, great. Wonderful. That one's barely trickling on the driver's side duff, but I can't get nothing out of the one on this side. So I'm going to try to very carefully remove that brass petcock conglomeration. And I'm probably going to regret it because it's probably going to snap off in the block. And then, and then we got a mess. <laughs> it budged. Oh yeah, you can see the sludge built up just on the bottom of that petcock. Schmoo galore. That's uh, the stuff that DD Speed Shop uses for holding his cars together that he builds. Duff, you ready with the pan? There we go. Yeah, this thing is pretty sludged up, so I'm going to go clean this up. And while this side drains out, uh, we'll go. Pull the other side apart, clean that one up as well, because I'm sure the other side is just as sludgy. Got our petcock all cleaned up. Look at that cool old brass unit. These new vehicles just got some cheesy plastic ones. They don't make them like they used to. All right, let's go pull the other side off, clean that one up too. Uh, I just wire wheeled it, uh, used some brake cleaner, some compressed air, blew all the sludge out of it. I don't know if these are a factory deal. I'm assuming they are. Doesn't say Ford on it though. He was, well, Henry liked putting his name on everything. So let's pull the other side off and get that one cleaned up as well. This manifold is not quite as conducive. It's got to wrap around the steering box. That's why. Hmm. Dang it, Matt, why didn't you? Clean these out when you had the manifolds off, fixing broken studs. Of course I grabbed the wrong size wrench. Oh, cheese and rice. Oh yeah, that's gonna snap off for sure. Yeah, now what? Now I got it turning. One eternity later. Oh, what a bugger. Bugger. Look at all this noise we got going on out back. So if you zoom right in, you can see the neighbors are tiling the section around me. It's about 2,000 bucks an acre, they tell me. But since you can't buy more land, you gotta improve the quality of the land you got. I don't know a ton about tiling, but it sounds like they just Run a bunch of tubing with holes in it. 
all around the land from the high spots to the low spots and all dumps in one central spot and then they got a pump and it just pumps it out of the ditch and dumps it on somebody else but there's all kinds of you know legalities and permissions you have to get to do so from the water board and whatnot but yeah i think they got two big excavators and a couple of dozers back there and then a couple of tractors and rolls of that uh tiling tubing everywhere so pretty neat process what are we gonna do now duff we're gonna take some radmeter hoses off and we're gonna spray water in there and try to flush some of that stuff out we'll get out what we can by flushing it and then we'll put everything back together and then we'll fill it up with water cycle it a few times get some heat going in it you know just like washing your clothes in hot water washing your dishes in hot water taking a nice hot bath you want to take a bath stinky dog he says no so let's uh flush some water through this thing i want to see if it's got thermostats in it i'm pretty sure shivaholic said it did not and that's what i was thinking too now you can see a little rust in there and a little rust in the heads look at this they're right up to the house stuff i got that great big black machine on tracks and a great big rope to the front of it with a dozer pulling it and uh on the back of that's a big old shank and he's ramming it in the ground and it's got that black pipe in there and how deep they put it depends on the grade you can see all the lines they got going across the hilltops there I don't know if you can see this, but it's some pretty brown, nasty water coming out of there. So, it's probably going to take a few of these rinses. I don't know what we can put in there that's going to take away rust. I've used Cascade in the past, and that's more for grease. But, I don't know. At this point, I'm willing to try about anything. I'm betting the radiator probably a little plugged up. It should be running down there, but it's running up the tank. Comes running out of this side of the block a heck of a lot faster. I bet we got some sludge built up in there. See if we can't fish a piece of wire in there to clean that hole out. It's running out that other side. It's a stream compared to that little trickle. Yeah, that's a good solid stream right there. I'm just gonna try to fish this mechanics wire through that hole. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, it's already knocking these big flakes of rust out of there. Water's coming out clear, but there's still big old chunks of rust. Well, we got a pretty steady stream, and it's nice and clear. But that just means in that direct path from that water neck down to there is clear. It doesn't mean that there isn't junk at the front of the head or the back of the head or at the back of the block. So we're not in the clear yet. I see what you did there. We're going to go over here and do the same thing on the driver's side. I don't know. Maybe try the radiator a little bit. Maybe pull the lower hoses off. I feel like we should probably pull the heads off and do the inside of the block. Flathead life. It's great. Oh yeah, look at those big old chunks of nasty rust that are coming over there. And this was the good side. Still getting more of them. I can just feel them hitting my hand. Look at that. That's everywhere in this block. It's even contaminated the radiator. This is the great part about these flat is they got the distributor down here. Right there. Every time you hit a puddle they get wet and then they won't run. 
so I guarantee this thing won't fire up now that we flooded everything. We can dry that out, get it running no problem here. What's the point if it runs if it just overheats anyway? Let's do two wires at the same time. I think just for now, because all the large debris that's in there, we're not going to put these back in there. We're just going to put a regular plug and we'll pull that whole plug out and dump everything. Because I'm afraid of these big chunks getting in there and plugging these up. And these things are a pain to get at, to take them on and off. Or regular plug, we can just put a wrench on it, pop it out. Or this, it's not that easy. We're uh, using the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. Well, what are the odds she fires up after getting all wet? Not very good, I bet. But we'll see. Get the speedometer working. He's even got the lights working in here. I don't know why. I suppose they're different brands, but this one doesn't light up very well. But I really hate this temp gauge. It's like 60 degree span from there to there, and then a 40 degree span from there to there. And once it gets to 230, I don't even care anymore. So like, I want to see a gauge that goes from like 160 to 230. Because 230 is like nuclear on this thing. 190 is fine, but. Between fine and nuclear, there's like an eighth of a degree, so I think we'll be uh, swapping out the old equius gauge for something a little better. Typical planet, it's got oil pressure when it's cold, but once she warms up, that goes away. Alright, let's take her out and put a couple miles on. What do you think, pal? Wanna go for a ride? Maybe? Break that works. That's right. Uptown living. So yeah, this got a four-speed in it. Most of the pickups and cars were three speeds, but I think they put a four-speed in the uh, four-cylinder 41 pickups to try to. I don't know. Keep that four-cylinder in the torque curve because I'm sure it was a real powerhouse. I think it was the same engine used in the. Ford 2N, 8N, 9N tractors, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody got mad at me because I don't double clutch. I'll try harder. Oops. Whoops. Still sitting on 130. Currently 42 degrees at 5 p.m. Thanks a lot, daylight savings. Seems like right on the speedometer at like 35, 40 is where it likes it. You're not pushing it too hard, but I don't know what it's got for rear gears. Probably like 411s. So 354 is really help. We gotta get rid of that clunky four speed, but a good old synchronized three speed. No heater in this thing either, so Duff, you're gonna have to keep me warm. Yeah, there's been almost been having a speedometer to my five off, so 43, and when we're saying it's doing 38, still sitting at 130, surprisingly. It's not a highway freeway cruiser, that's for dang sure. That's handy, dead battery on my phone. We gonna call Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters! Oh, we don't have a rearview mirror. Put that on the list of things to do, Duff. Okay, double clutch. Grinds a little bit. Supposed to be just sped up the RPMs. Still 
boat sitting at 130 maybe a little flush job did it it's just straight water that's in there right now because why would we put anything good in there i like to scratch reverse Gump likes it when it scratches ears you guys remember the old itchy and scratchy show from the simpsons Duff. And we're one, uh, about, just about two miles in, like I said. I could run like three and a half miles round trip to town and back. She'd be uh, pushing rusty water out the radiator and all over the windshield. And along with no rear view mirror, there's no wipers. So. And then that stuff would just ooze out the cap, hit the mechanical fan and blast all over the windshield. That would be pretty sweet if that little flush job fixed this thing. I'm sure it made it better. Like I said, new water bumps. I mean, I sh should probably get the radiator cord out or get a different radiator. And I think the head's got to come off and get all the crust out of the block. But I really don't want to do that. Not bad. But we will if we have to. It's really not a bad engine to pull. But if I'm that far to pull in the engine, though, I'm going to pull that tranny with it. And put a good free speed in there. Boogie's goats are loose. I think they're always just loose. They're never really in the pen. Yeah, that's that's reverse. Can't find it grinding. Still sitting on 130. What do you think about that, dog? No. Can we fix it? Just a little 
stuff like that. This, it's, it's nitpicky stuff. It's not high dollar stuff, but it takes a bunch of time wiring. Ugh. And he does a great job of like uh, using that cloth wiring and wrapping it and stuff. Still sitting at 130. So yeah, that's why we had him do it. work his magic on it because he's good at that stuff. And it doesn't make good content for us. And it makes it so that we can drive this stuff. We should have had to put a freaking heater in here. There's the holes in the firewall still from the last one. We bombing this thing around all winter. Throw some carpet in here. We gotta put a window crank on Duff's side and a door handle on the outside on my side. And mirrors. And a bunch of other empty stuff. Pretty good. Still sitting. It might have just inched above to 135. The big test on these things is like parades when you're going really slow, so you're not the fans. The engine's not revved up, so the fan's not pulling air through the radiator. And you don't have air going through the radiator from the car moving. The parades are always on the hottest days. We did go to the Halloween parade the other day. We took Reggie to that. Worked great. Those are my favorite kind of parades raids in October. But yeah, stoplight driving, stoplight, stoplight in town. When you ain't moving very fast, that's when the old temp gauge really creeps up on anything, especially these flat ends. We have four, five, six miles in. We're probably at like 160 now. I hate that. I've told you how much I hate this Equus gauge. Equus or whatever they're called. Yeah, we're getting close to 180. And again, like we're going a little bit high, higher, higher speed, faster on the old highway here than we were on the ground. But still, it's 40 freaking degrees out. Should be pushing heat. That could be other thing. The block could be cracked. It could be from compression, and that would be absolute. Worst case, Ontario. In worst case, Ontario, you get would be uh, compression getting into the cooling system. Then she's pretty much scrap iron. There she goes. She's hitting 190 now. It's still a lot better than it ever was before. So I think we keep flushing it. Maybe even pull the water pumps off and the heads off and. Stick a bunch of, uh, what do they call this? Pipe cleaners. Stick a bunch of pipe cleaners in there. They still use those for arts and crafts at school. I always wondered why they called them pipe cleaners when I was a kid. Because that's what they use it for was cleaning pipes. Maybe they're just smaller versions of it. I don't know. But... Yeah. Definitely need to clean out the block because I'm sure there's a ton more of that stuff. But I don't know that there's a good way to get that stuff loose without damage and other components, you know, like the seals and the water pump. It's really probably the only the radiator itself and the water pump. Somebody said like oxalic acid or something like that. Because I got a Model A we got to do as well. So comment down below what you've heard of to use to clean engine blocks out that have rust. That's what we're dealing with here. It's rust. Not grease. on the front inside of the headlights how neat is that how neat is that definitely no speed shift in the old four speed here still hanging on at 190 Sailing down the road about 40, 45. She's sitting steady at 190, which is good, but it's also 40 degrees out. So I guess it's a 
long time car anyway. The dead end shop, it's probably 195 or 200. Is it hissing out the overflow? Is that what I'm hearing? Yep, definitely hissing out the overflow. So he must be at about boiling. I told you how much I hate this gauge. It's definitely not the gauge causing it to overheat. You hear that though? It's an angry radiator. Not what you like to see. Let's get this overflow hose here and it's Steamy. Some bad stuff, don't get it on you. So I don't know. Obviously we're gonna have to take her another step further. Great. What do you think? We just pull it out, get a gasket set, pull the heads off. Runs good. I just got a fresh load of Wibby, so I think I might go have a sandwich. What is it? Chances I don't drop that wrench. What are the chances I can get that plug out without scalding myself? Duff says start with the passenger side. It's easier to get at. I'm gonna go get a glove. Or a rag. Then I'm gonna drop it down the floor drain. There we go. Oh yeah, she's nice and rusty. We're gonna have to do that a few times. Pretty rusty over here too. What's the trick for getting rusty overheating engines to not be rusty and overheat? You must have some trick from the old country, huh? Yeah. You want to take some acid? Acid? You want some acid? What, what kind of acid? Or well, what we used to wash trucks with. Was it good for rust? Well, you don't cut rust. It like rot a hole in my radiator? What do you got for a radiator? You got aluminum or you got no, copper? No. Huh? I got the old copper one. Copper? You don't eat aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it would hurt anything. You don't have to make it real strong. You know. Oh, just put a cup in there or something? Yeah, cup in there. And, uh, yeah, that stuff. I pulled them drain plugs out and I stuck a wire in there and I got a bunch of flakes, you know, and I flushed it out till it came out clear and then I ran it. I got her about, I got about eight miles on it. Oh. And, and then, yeah, then it started hitting, sat at 190 for a while, and then as soon as I got close to home, she started hissing, so it must have been at 200, 210, 220. But I'm sure there's a bunch more of that crap in the block, and it's probably in, got it in the radiator now. Yeah, let it cool down a bit, and, and then over that and run it through there and flush it out. Yeah, we can try that. All right, we'll let her cool down. And Fill it up with water and some acid and try it again. We'll get to go for another ride though, Duff. This stuff's boring for you, huh? Yeah. All right, she's a windy one. Look at this, 77 ball cap orders. We ran out of boxes, so we gotta get more boxes. And then a bunch of uh, shirts and decals and banners. Get yours at Mortsky.com. Shout out to everybody who uh, made a order. Don Maroney, Rudy Hins, Jason Todnick. Scott Payne. Anyway, we're gonna run this to the post office and uh, get a couple miles on this thing. I took the drain plugs out. Obviously you saw that. Put these tiny little magnets on there. So hopefully that'll catch some of our rust. Got her topped off with water. And then I put about a cup of Zep, Zep Alumi in there. It's super aluminum cleaner and brightener. I don't know, Mojo said, give that stuff a shot. New fast acting formulation produces greater brightness in seconds. So it'll be bright and shiny, all of our aluminum parts that this touches. 
anywho, yeah. It's poisonous, but it also says it's uh, environmentally friendly. So, you're welcome, Greta. How dare you! Don't drink it, though. So, because we got so much, it's super windy out, so hopefully this stuff rides. I'm gonna have Mojo ride with me, because this is gonna be a real bugger. Bugger me. Carrying all this stuff in there. Should we bring our own two-wheel carts down? I don't think there's gonna be room for all three of us stuff. So, yeah, you might have to stay here. Maybe if we throw that cart on top, and we can put them on that and wheel it in, and it'll hold the boxes down, because it is windy out. We don't have any leaves left on the trees to show you how windy it is. Oh, you can see the, the weeds and the cattails. Slough ain't froze over yet, but she's a windy bug out there, Duff. Uh, we'll get some heat through it and then we'll check those magnets and see what it does. It's got to be getting better. It's got to be. We're going to put Mojo to work. I figure two people take half as long. That way if it scatters all over the highway, he gets to pick it up. Hopefully it'll start. Maybe we can race the 6.2 diesel after work, huh? Yeah. I want a door opener that works. Oh, it's gonna work? Yeah, you might have to let me out here. This thing does sound good though. Kirby the oil man's here, gonna fill up our diesel tank for the winter. How much is gonna fly out on the way to town? I suppose I could have had Duff right up front. You could have laid back there all sprawled out, holding everything down. Yeah. The heck we got going? Oh, it's one of them tractors for the for the Thailand company. Tiling. Yeah, I got these big four-wheel drive single wheel tractors to uh, haul spools of what do they call that? Tubing pipe. Two of them in there? Yeah. Good over there? Yep. Now don't make fun of my double clutching skills, they ain't very good. <laughs> Did that wind blow your ain't to work today? Yeah. You know, it had six pillars just like a sailboat. Yeah? Yeah. It runs good with a tailwind. Runs good with a tailwind? You don't suppose those goofs in that uh, tractor ain't got no driver's license and it's, it's lunch time so they're just going to take the tractor to town to get lunch. That thing must go pretty good. We're doing 40 mile an hour and we ain't catching them. They do slow that on. Go faster than you go 40, 45. Go faster than your Alice Chalmers? You know, pass there. I doubt it's Chalmers. Going downhill with the clutch in? Yeah. So if you guys want to go on a tractor ride all the time, you and I had enough. And my younger days. You had enough driving tractors around as a kid, why would you want to drive one for fun? left and right too you know yeah I think they're just the roads are better and the cars are better and the materials are better it's like people fixing shoes you just you just go buy a new pair yeah 
it's just like a lawnmower. If you're going to pay somebody to work on this thing, if they put two hours or an hour in it, it's more than a lawnmower's wood. Go buy a new one. Yep. Better roll my window down so I can get back in. chatters like that well there's a lot of different <laughs> hot that... spots hard spots in the flywheel she, she... pressure plate she warped huh? maybe yeah warped a little i can't imagine it's from sitting around for 30 years right yeah she'll left it idling while we were doing that get some more heat into her You got the heater on? What? You don't have a heater in here? Yeah. Got all the hot air we need right here. <laughs> Didn't we, Duff? Guessing that little dash mark is 212, so we're like at 215. Because that's the only mark that's got that dash on it. So I would guess that's the boiling point, which is 212 at water. And we got our steaming. So, yeah, a little bull by too. Oh, yeah. Of course, we do. Why wouldn't we? Everything we got is hot garbage. All right, let's run her inside and get her flush. Yeah, you can hear it hissing. It sounds like a freaking airplane taking off. All right, let her cool down a little bit. Crack those open. We're just gonna let it go in the floor drain because 
the old Zeppalumi is uh, biodegradable. Should be good. Well, there's our magnet. That plug is hot. But you can see it did catch a fair amount of rust. I'm sure there's a lot more of that where that came from. That water's coming out pretty clear, actually. So maybe we're getting somewhere. Other than the fact that uh, we're still overheating. Oh, look at all that rust. Yummy. Whoa. I have to run that through a few more times. The water's looking significantly more brown on this side. Well, ran her again. She overheated, found a bunch more rust on the uh, magnets. So, talk to a uh, Big Dave's radiator. Actually, it's just Big Dave and his dad's the radiator guy, so we called him. And he said, put some thermostats in there. So instead of thermostats, because I didn't have two, I only have one. So I took these two inch washers, 7 16 diameter center hole, machined them down to inch and seven eighths. We're gonna put those in there and uh, see what happens there. We can open them up bigger. And we'll see if that makes a difference on the cooling, because yeah, she goes nuclear after a handful of miles. And the theory behind that is that the water isn't staying in the radiator long enough. So we're trying to keep the water so it can only flow through here at a limited rate. And instead of having a thermostat, thermostat's kind of there just so the engine can warm up. And so that you, it's at operating temperature sooner. And then also that you see get, a, so you get heat in the cab, which we don't need any of the above. So we're gonna see how this works. So here we are back at present time and I'm gonna pull the heads off this engine and see if we can't pressure wash it out. I don't know if I can run my pressure washer on the limited power we have because my pressure washer is diesel fired but it's got like a 220 pump that pumps the fuel and the water. So we're gonna pull the heads off this thing because it's just got a bunch of crap in there. That's the last thing I can figure we can do. We might have to pull the engine out to wash it out but everybody says you got to clean the, the sand and the debris and crap out of these blocks. And I believe it. You saw all the draining we did. I don't know how many times I cycled water and cascade and everything we could think of through that block. Probably a dozen times and it just keeps on coming. So we got to get in there and there's stuff that's not loose. And I don't want to put a radiator until that block's cleaned out. And if this block is no good, then we just got to find another one. So we got our wildfire lift. These things are awesome because they're 110. So we should be able to lift this thing up and down if we got to pull the engine to get at the bell housing bolts or whatever. But hopefully we can get the head off with it in place and maybe we can just clean it out that way. But I feel like we're going to have to put it in an engine stand. So we're going to have to get one of these small block Chevrolets out of an engine stand. And turn it over and do some pressure washing in there. What do you think, Duff? And of course, we don't have a light right here. So we need to work on that. Ooh, we could run, tap off of that one and run over here. I don't know. But anyway, the last light is over there. So it's kind of darkish over here. It's fine. Good lighting I, I thoroughly enjoy it so this will make me appreciate it when we get power back on hopefully it's been like what two days hopefully in the next two we get some power so i'm gonna go ahead and i already drained this thing pull the radiator hose off and we'll pull the spark plug wires off maybe uh luby dube some of them uh nuts pull the head off what say you yeah i'm excited hopefully just kidding probably not it's a real tight fit around these head studs to the head and plus these things get rusty and heat cycles and everything else. So getting the head off might be interesting. This is a, I believe it's 46 to 48, 59 AB. But anyway, the uh, 59 ABs have head studs where the later engines, the 8 BAs or the 8 CMs or the 8 RTs have bolts. So you just take those bolts out and the head falls off. Something you don't have to deal with on these. Or you do have to do anyway you get my point these studs you can take the studs out but they're a special cut thread the flathead guys will talk about it you don't want to do that if you can avoid it so i think we're gonna try something i've never done before i've never had a head off an engine that ran this one runs so 
If we take all these bolts off and try firing the engine up, it should push the head off. In theory, maybe? I mean, if it's got enough compression anyway, we'll give her a whirl. We'll let these soak for a bit and we'll give her a shot. I got the nuts off of all of the head bolts, I think, was there should be 21 on these. So easy way to tell if there's a 21 stud and a 24 stud. A 24 stud has two bolts in the middle, a 21 stud has three in the middle. So this is a 24 stud. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, all the nuts are off. So let's bump this thing over, see if this head pops off. You don't want the key on. Here goes nothing. Well, I can't, oh, she's loose. A little bit. I could see some compression coming around a couple of these head studs. Obviously this thing isn't a high compression engine originally and uh, she's pretty worn out. So I guess I'm not surprised. I didn't expect it to shoot off, but hopefully that loosened it up enough so we can pry it off there. I've never pulled one of these heads in a vehicle either. I don't think or with a cab on it. So it's hard to get at. Usually you can get like a punch and a hammer or a chisel on the back side and do some prying. But I really can't on this because the cab, the firewall and everything's in the way. Obviously it's hung up on these studs. So let's put a little PB blaster around them. I think we're out of croil, unfortunately. So we'll resort to the PB, which there ain't nothing wrong with the PB, but it doesn't smell quite as nice as the old arrow croil. There is a ton of scale in that engine block. I don't think you or I were surprised. Let's get this head gasket out of there. Try to salvage that, even though I do have a new one. And we'll go pull the other side off and then figure out how we're gonna clean this up, if we can. It's gonna fight us a little bit around all these head studs. You know what all the race cars do? Put head studs in instead of head bolts? I mean, these are factory race engines. Way to go, Henry. I think this hole should go, oh yeah, completely down. And look at that. I only have to go in an inch and a half. That's definitely gonna be a problem. Yuck. All right, let's see if the passenger side is as cooperative. It's not appearing so. Ew. Ew. Look at this passage. It's full right to the top with crap. That's all scale and rust and debris of all different origins. Probably some sand from when they cast this thing. Yuck. And this port's the same way. It seems like it's worse at the back of the engine block than the front. This guy right here, yeah. See how this pry bar goes all the way in up here? 
Doesn't even catch anything. That's how they should all be. Now we go have a sandwich. Figure out what our plan of attack is next. I think I want to get the pressure washer in there, but we got to have somewhere for this stuff to escape. And we're going to try to get as much stuff out before we pressure wash. Uh, and I don't think we can run the pressure washer without power. The good news is when I went shipped the Mordski.com merch this morning, the uh, Highline boys were dropping poles in the ditch. So they got about six to replace between me and town. So hopefully we get some power by the end of the day. This is day number four. Yeah, not good. Not good at all. But I am going to go buy a great big used generator this afternoon so that we are prepared for the next ice apocalypse at Mordski Worldwide. Oh, the other thing with pressure washing, that stuff's got to have somewhere to go, so I think we're going to have to pull the water pumps off so that we got somewhere for this stuff to go. Otherwise, we're just going to jar it around a bit in there. we got to have somewhere for it to go, and it's clearly not going to go out those drain holes that we've been trying to get it out of up to this point. The other part we're taking the water pumps off is there also the engine mounts. Multi-purpose. So we're going to have to find a way to block the engine up. I wonder if we could take some compressed air and that might push some of it back and everywhere else, but it really can't get anywhere. That's gonna to be too damaging. I guess I could get below the valves, but I think we'll be fine. Before we make a mess, let's try the magnet. That picks up a couple, it's mostly carbon in the cylinder, but I bet this is mostly rust in there. Yeah, look at that. Ew. It just keeps on a coming. Dear Lord, that looks pretty good though, and it doesn't spray it all over the vehicle and me and the walls. We just drop it right on the floor though. A wise person would probably have like a trash can over here. Empty cardboard box. That's maybe what we should do. Yeah, we already got a sweep, what the heck. The magnet isn't small enough to fit in that end hole back there, so let's see if we can find a smaller magnet. We might have to get a pick, jar some of this stuff loose. I'm sure it's stuck in place because it's probably been in there for 70 years oh that's a good one if we knock it all on the floor we can sweep it up with a dustpan and show you just how much we pulled out of here well yeah, yes sir viewer from Michigan is here to pick up the 1984 K30 so dust says we got to go take care of them and get them on their way oh he's a nice guy Duff you just relax to be continued. All right, K30 is off to Michigan. Pumped up his tires in his trailer. He ran them low so he'd ride better. Now we gotta go find him a power steering reservoir. He said he saw one in a video that he thought he needed, and I don't know where the heck it would be at, but we'll go take a look. We got them all in one spot. Oh, and the Highline boys were here too. So hopefully, when I get back from picking up a generator, we got some power. Real power, not this fake power. Not Northern Tool Chinese power. Did you get them set down the road? There goes the only one ton single wheel Silverado, big block, automatic, completely loaded pickup we'll probably ever own. That was a unicorn. I'm gonna regret that one, but we can't keep them all. Look at these guys. It's got a track machine going down here. That's a Digger Derek. Looks like, what is it, a Commander? So it should be a Terex Telelect. That's what we used to uh, build in our previous life. We got the old pole out and the snapped off part of it. 
And now they got an aerial device or a bucket truck behind it. And it looks like an international chassis. And they're gonna come set a pole down here, I would assume. And then they'll hook up the wires. We should have power. Hopefully, right Duff? Dang, that's a majestic scene right there, huh Duff? Any, any picture with you is majestic. All right, I had a couple sandwiches last night and fished some rust out of these cylinders. Okay, I did it on the passenger side, the driver's side. I mean, I was here for like 20 minutes. Talk about a boring job, leaning over a fender, sticking a magnet in, wiping the rust off. Sticking the magnet in the block, wiping the rust off. Sticking the magnet in the block, wiping the rust off. Sticking the magnet in, wiping the rust off. You get the point, it sucked. And I was just trying to get the big stuff out of there. And then we'll pressure wash and try to push what's left out pressure washer but i think we're gonna have to take the water pumps out yeah but anyway that sucks we got to get it over to where the drain is and where the pressure washer is we got power i went and bought a ginormous 35 kw generator powered by nothing better than the old vortec 4300 chevrolet v6 with dual stacks and tink tinks but anyway we got power back on some full power so we should be able to run the uh pressure washer so i'm gonna wheel this thing around had to move everything out of the shop because I had everything inside during and before and after the storm. And I got to move a couple things yet. I think we're going to use a side by side hook onto this. I got Mickelson's back in the country from Floridia enjoying the weather we got going on up here. So I think I'm going to get him to steer or pull or whatever. We're going to get this thing back to the pressure washer and hog this son of a gun out. And then hopefully we can stick it back together. And I guarantee, we don't have guarantees around here, but this, this is going to fix that heating problem. I could probably do it with the skid steer, but I don't really want to screw anything up on that thing. And we got to get the skid steer out to get side by side out, and we got to go to the burn pit or go put parts away. This is white lightning stuff that didn't work, and wheels off that D100, and more wheels off the D100. The viewer sent us some trim and a cool old heater. We got to stash that away and a carburetor. But look at this. Look at this shipment of sweatshirts. We finally got them for sale to the public. You can get your very own Morsky hoodie without the hole. These things are awesome. They're nice, they're light. What I call them is a cheap sweatshirt, but nothing's cheap anymore. But I like a light sweatshirt. So when you're working in the shop, it's not bunching up and balled up on you. And it's, it's good for working. You don't get super hot when you're working. I like them. These are embroidered. They're gonna hang together for a long time. They don't like welding, they don't like torching, but whatever, they work good for a work shirt. These are super soft, they're just like the uh, next level t-shirts So we got. These are made by J America. Uh, get yours at mortski.com. We got this sale going on this week. I think we, it's listed down here. I think it's a certain amount off and a certain amount of dollars you gotta spend. I think it's 15% off, all orders over $20, so. 20 bucks isn't much anymore, that's that like handful of stickers. But anyway, get these things. They're hot off the press, they're on sale. I don't know when we're gonna run another sale. We ran a few over the holidays because, you know, that's the time of year that I wanna see you guys enjoying some of our swag. So go ahead and check that out, but I have to carry these, put them back in our uh, merch room in the back and get them all filed away so we can take on these orders that you guys are gonna swamp us with. And also we just need to get them out of the way to uh, get the side-by-side -side out of here. That is a lot of sweatshirts, so you guys and gals need to clean them up because I don't want to be tripping over them. But yeah, these things are good. I like them. We waited way too long to get these things and uh, hope you enjoy them. So, we start doing some moving. Never mind that thing. Maybe we should throw them all in the back of this Dodge and then haul them to the back of the shop. What do you think about that, Duff? Is that a bad idea? <sighs> it 
so nice that we got electricity again. But you had to dress North Dakotan. <laughs> Florida man don't wear that this get up. The warmest clothes I brought. <laughs> <laughs> man, that looks like, did you take a picture by the fireplace? For Christmas with that yeah. get up, you know? Yeah. You and you and Dune with the, the matching. What I wore for Christmas. With the matching <laughs> flannels. Dinner. Look at that duff. Look at show them what happens when you walk underneath dirty, nasty semis. You're like a skunk now. And you smell like one all the time. Who says you can't use lower trucks for work? Doing work right here. I guess we're going for a ride. Dang, nobody even fell on the ice? Bob brought his, how many pairs of them boat shoes you got? Five. <laughs> Did, didn't get any new ones for Christmas? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> so this is all the debris that I scraped out of just the passenger side of the block. One magnet full at a time. And there's still more. And then this is all I scraped out of the driver's side. So I'm betting there's that much on the driver's side. Yeah. Hopefully we can get the pressure washer to get it cleaned out. See what a little compressed air does if that shoots some rust out with a shot. Less messy than water? Maybe. It goes nothing. I've been doing this for, I don't know. Let me check the camera. 15 minutes. 15 minutes straight of just blowing air in there and scooping out rust with the magnet. And every time you stick the magnet in, you get a tablespoon of rust. This thing, oh my God, just packed. I have a very good feeling that this is gonna resolve our heating issue. Cripes. It just goes on and on and on. And there's no way we're going to get it all out of there. But this will be a good start. As long as that water can flow through the entire block cavity, I think we'll be fine. And then We'll just randomly flush this thing a few times through the uh, driving period. And that'll help too. Because it should want to settle towards the bottom. So if we keep running magnets on those drain plugs, it's going to take eternity and hundreds of thousands of miles, but we might get all that stuff out of there. Just insane. I can't believe this thing even float any water. This is after 34 minutes of doing this crap. Look at that. Still getting stuff on there. It's a lot better than it was though. It's 
Just got one more side to go. You're not gonna believe this. Got the old uh, Coke scale out. You know, you gotta negate the weight of the Folgers. That's five pounds, one ounces. One ounces. One ounce? Five pounds of rust in our flathead. That thing's gonna be able to pull the wheels now with all that weight off the front. Holy. And I bet there's, there's more in there. Oh, dang, Duff. That is a lot of rust, buddy. That's gonna fix it. I'm sure this smart way is super accurate. Probably down to a half pound. That's gotta fix it. That is, that is a ton of rust. Swept it all up underneath the wildfire lift here and over where we were cleaning it up in the wash bay. Giggity. Giggity, 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 giggity. So got the floor jack holding the engine up on the crankshaft, but look at this. Just, of course, more crap. So let's get that out of there. Oh, the good stuff. Of course, this is like the lowest point in the cooling system. So that's where all the heavy metal is gonna sit, right? That's what I would think. So I'm guessing this wasn't helping the uh, water pumps to do their job either yuck so I think we're gonna oh man it just it's a pretty big cavity I put these water pumps on about 10 years ago and apparently wasn't concerned about the rust that was behind them or maybe there was no rust back then but I'm guessing there was so we'll get this fished out blown out magnet it out whatever and then we'll go to the other side do the same thing because I'm sure it's just as bad. You gonna run the pressure washer? You gonna sweep the floor? See if we can get her up to five and a half pounds. Yeah? All right. I guess it requires thumbs to do both, so don't worry. You just uh, hang around and look dirty. All right, I got everything I think I can get cleaned out of there by hand. I actually found if you stick that Cyclops light that's hanging out over there and put her down where the water pump was, you could see in there, and there's a bunch of stuff that was really lodged in there, so I got a big old screwdriver and pried her all out. And the funny part is that stuff's been in there probably since it was new. It comes out really... It's almost like dirt, but it's magnetic. It's not red rust colored, but yeah, this floor was cleanly swept, wasn't it, Duff? We need some more rawhides, you don't like those? Anyway, fire up the pressure washer, and hopefully that runs out the lowest point and it floats all that rust out and not into the floor drain to a safe, recyclable place. How dare you? Yeah, just look away. We are going to get absolutely douched. Look at that nice flint water running out of there. Oh, yeah. All right, we're getting serious. We're turning on the heat now. Duff, do you like pressure washing less than I do? I don't think that's possible. I hate pressure washing. We'll leave that up to that silly guy in Pottawatomie County, Oklahoma. Oh yeah. Anywho, got this thing all washed out and yeah, we got a lot of black water, brown water, purple water, all the colors of water out of there, but she's running pretty clear. Yeah, now I'm gonna get the old super scraper out, get yours at mortski.com. We got limited supplies. We got a few of the uh, SS5 and SS5S's on hand. There might be one SS1, but it's probably gone by the time this video comes out. They go fast. 
I'm gonna scrape this gasket surface for the water pump and the head gaskets. I'm gonna reuse the head gaskets because I don't know if this is even gonna fix it. One thing I'm worried about is all that rust that was in there was on the walls of the block, uh, for lack of better terminology, the side walls of the block. And I'm worried that there might be a hole, we you know punched a hole in the side of the block from scraping around in there or whatever. So I'm not gonna waste the new set of head gaskets. The water pump gaskets are wasted. The head gaskets will be just fine because they're copper. Most of these new kits actually come with whatever paper style crappy head gaskets, but you can still buy copper gaskets. You just gotta pay up for them. But I'm gonna reuse those ones, put them back in here just to make sure everything's working because this thing still might be overheating and I'm not gonna waste a pair of $60 copper head gaskets. They're probably even more than that now. Who knows? But Scrape everything up. I'm gonna clean those water pumps up, put everything in there. I uh, might run some water through the radiator. I stuck a magnet in there. There's a little bit of rust in the bottom of the uh, radiator, but it couldn't get past the water pumps to get in there, really. So I think we're we're pretty good. And then there's always gonna be just a little bit of rust in there. So maybe we'll leave some magnets in the block and hopefully those catch most of it. But I think this thing is gonna be way more gooder. So Probably uh, work real fast doing all that stuff. And we're definitely gonna torque the head bolts to what they need to be. Oh, I'll show you on these water pumps. These are uh, Bob Drake water pumps. I think I got them from Speedway Motors, but either way you can get them from Bob Drake. There's a bunch of companies that make them out there. They're much better than the originals. Don't ask me why, but everybody says they are. We're gonna clean that all up. But when you take these things off, there's one, two, three bolts and they don't come off. It's because there's a fourth one right in there that they hid and they get rusty. And so you gotta use a uh, some type of extraction device, usually because they're missing the corners. Right, Duff? Right. Oh, and I blew the heads out with compressed air, so those look good. So uh, yeah, we'll clean everything up, put it all back together. And no more overheating issues, right? We can go for rides for eternity, and then some. I think it's sandwich time. What do you think, Duff? Yeah. You know how I said earlier this thing's got copper head gaskets in it? It does now. I see old Permatex spray a gasket, AKA head gasket in a can or the aerosol head gasket. They weren't copper. I don't know why I thought they were. They're actually stamped Ford. So this thing was rebuilt. It's got 40 over pistons in it. So I'm guessing somebody put Ford gaskets in it a hundred years ago when they did that. But anyway, we don't know if like I said, this is gonna fix it, so I don't wanna waste a good set of gaskets, so here we go. We're gonna let this set up a bit. Maybe enjoy a sandwich. Maybe we already are. And then we'll uh, slide them on. Their head's installed, torqued down to whatever the 3 8 Milwaukee does. Seems like it's good enough. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about this ignition system. So it's got a 4648 Ford Crab style two bolt distributor with an adapter to go from the three bolt that this engine originally was. Long story short, this is not the engine that was in this pickup. It's not the engine that was in this frame. Uh, and then anyway, I cleaned up blasted these plug wire holders and they got these little brass inserts kind of polished them up painted them up this was man this was years and years and years ago and then i can't remember who i got these 
like rigid customs or no it wasn't rigid customs that's my buddy Eli uh, some motorcycle shop I think is who I got these plug wires from and then the ends these are a Raja end they're a thread in end so like they're replaceable you can unthread it and pull that wire out fish the wire through it was kind of a pain fishing them through there but I just really dig those ends and I think the same place I got these knurled end caps for the old B6L uh, NGK plugs and yeah I just like the looks of all that and then the distributor was rebuilt by Jim Lidner I think he's in or was in the uh, Indianapolis Indiana area but anyway he just passed away here I don't know within the last couple weeks so I think I got two distributors that were rebuilt by him he was like the flathead ignition expert he was the man so I'm honored to have a couple of his uh, distributors around like I said this distributor has been around for over 10 years probably when I had him go through it so yeah that's what we got it's got a really good ignition system on it and then my college roommate uh, Ty Bug he went through this uh, carburetor for me years ago so yeah that's what uh, we got going on here and the bottom end is just hot garbage I did notice I pressure washed the engine a little bit when I was pressure washing inside the engine and there's a rebuild tag on the back I'll see if I can show you a lot of times these rebuilders Ford actually had certified rebuilders and I think they did some of their own engine rebuilding but uh, they would put on there how much the mains and rods were turned and then the uh, bore as well sometimes there's a date but usually not you can see it back there on the bell housing it's got those two little brass tags if you clean it up it should tell you what the rods and mains are turned at well like I said we could see on the piss on this was turned or bored 40 over which I don't know how far they go on flat it's I feel like there's guys going like 80 or 120 or something but 40 to me is kind of the limit I'm gonna find another one and board out if, if I open one up that I'm gonna rebuild and it's at 40 already I think that one's there's there's more of them out there so anyway let's get some hoses on this thing let's get our plugs back in the block and hopefully get this thing fired back up because somebody wants to go for an R-I-D-E that's you huh you're getting so good at spelling in your old age even if you're getting gray and grumpy yeah so the original water pumps on a 36 pickup would have been like right on the front of the cylinder head right here and so these things kind of dump straight down so they cut them off and welded some different braised some different uh, radiator was next on there to put this 59 ab engine in it we do still have those washers in there kind of acting as a well not even a thermostat but to slow water down we're going to leave those in there for now see what it does we can always mess with those and take them out but i think it's going to be just fine i think we found our issue and it's pretty cold out today so it should be just fine oh, i just got me thinking bubba's that's what jim lidner went by that was the name of his shop or i don't know maybe that was his nickname but Bubba's Ignition, he always had the coolest little label engine or uh, rebuild tag, kind of similar to the old Ford rebuild tags. Should probably give her an oil change, I'm guessing some water got in there. Not a bad idea. I know I should be putting coolant in this time of year and to keep it from rusting out, but that stuff's like real money, so. We're just going to test it out with some water first. Probably going to hold significantly amount more water than it did before. So, I mean, not only is it going to cool better, it's going to have more cooling capacity. We got a little leak on the water pump on the passenger side. I don't know if the gasket got screwed up when you're installing. It's kind of hard to install those because you got to lift the motor up because it's part of the engine mount. And I don't know if I got something cattywampus. And then one of those three ace bolts, I didn't like the way it felt. So if we got to take that apart, I'm going to put a helicoil in it. And I don't really feel like doing that right now. So let's just fire this thing up and see what happens after we uh, drain the oil, of course. We fire this pig up, Duff. Got some fresh oil in it. We should probably check it. There was a lot of water. 
I'm guessing it got past the rings when we were pressure washing it. Hopefully it's not from a crack in the block that got it into the oil. I don't know. I'm guessing with all that PB blaster that I used to lubricate the cylinders so they didn't flash rust. That's something you got to check out. Make sure you don't uh, flash rust your cylinder walls, right, Duffers? Again, we'll get some good smoke, so let's set the camera up. Would you like to uh, hold the camera while I fire it up? Okay, guess not. Or maybe it won't even run. I mean, we worked on it, so there's always a chance. If you ever don't have any spark after you just wash something or you hit a puddle or whatever, pop the distributor cap off. I bet it got wet inside there. These things are notorious for it. Hit a puddle and a Ford flathead and there you sit on the side of the road in a rainstorm. So we'll put some water displacement 40 inside of there and that'll keep it from happening hopefully. Anyways. Tech tip of the day, huh Duff? Oh yeah, she's humid. Moist, we'll blow that out of there. Moist. I tell you what, anybody can say anything about a, you know, late model Ford, you know, late model, 302, 351, whatever, they got the distributor in the front. Oh, Fords are better because the distributor's up front. Take a step back into your Ford history and uh, look at the old crab style and clamshell and scuba diver and the old early flatheads pre-1949. They're freaking terrible. Yeah, they're up front, but they're way down there. They got two sets of points. You got to see in there with a mirror. Freaking miserable. So yeah, Ford guys, remember where you came from. You suppose she's gonna fire up now? I got a better feeling. If we got enough battery power left, that seems to went dead. I guess it's booster pack time. I suppose we could just put it right on the starter solenoid. And clamp the ground on the engine block, right? Well, that's wet too, imagine that. So we got spark. Don't electrocute me. Seems faint, very faint. Almost non-existent. Battery charger's hooked up. Now let's see if she goes. Need a little more uh, initial RPM stuff said. Good call. Dang, Duff, you didn't say anything about all the water spraying out over here. I suppose when we wash the engines, one of the exhaust valves is open and filled the exhaust, but she's out of there now. But I tell you what, I don't like the distributors on these things, but you can't beat the sound of a straight pipe flathead. Real good. Should we uh, let this charge up for a little bit? Dump some water back in it because, yeah, that water pump's leaking real bad. We are about out of time, and I don't know if I got another gasket. Like I said, I want to Healy coil one of them bolts. I didn't like the way it threaded in, but it's definitely good enough to run. Let's see if she overheats, huh, Duff? Yeah. All right, she's been outside idling for a good 20 minutes, and the temp gauge hasn't even come up. It's 20 degrees out. It's nice and cold, so if you're somewhere where it's 20 degrees, get your fleece beanie cap in your uh, hoodie at Morski.com. They're super nice. I'm super excited that this pickup is working. If this thing works, I want to put a heater down there on the firewall, vintage style one. Obviously we'll have to convert the blower motor to 12 volts. So we'll find an old six volt there and clean it up. And they made some really cool old ones. Like Tropic Air was a really cool one. And that's really the only one I can think of. I think I've had a couple Tropic Airs. Yeah, they made some Hades. That's a really cool one. So yeah, I really want to get some door panels in this thing. We got a couple of kinks to work out. Yeah, hopefully this thing works good, huh, Duff? Well, the record is about four miles before it pushes water out. So, let's see if we can 
beat that. This is the coolest weather we've ever driven it in by only by about five degrees though. I know we've had it in 25 degree weather. Half tank of fuel, 20 pounds of oil pressure, flathead life. Oh yeah, it needs a rear view mirror. And there's an air leak somewhere. Oh, it's around the windshield. Yeah, the freaking scissor screw window mechanism is stripped out. And I don't know, they either don't reproduce them or they're silly money. All the used ones are stripped out too, so we need to get that fixed and then put a seal around the windshield. Wintertime driving excursions anyway, in the summer it might feel nice. Yeah, 20 degrees on the dock today. It's funny, there's a, a Pines winter front grill cover. I don't know what it's for. It almost looks like it's for like a Cat LaSalle, like 36-ish. But anyway, those Pines winter fronts were built in Ch Chicago, Detroit, something like that. Anyway, they were up here in the Midwest. They were like a cover, like a winter front, obviously. They went over your grill and you could adjust them open or close for how much air came through there so your heater would work better, your car would run at the proper temperature and stuff like that. They're pretty cool. Like the, some of them are thermostatically controlled, like for the 32 and 34 cords, I believe. There's a sensor or sender you would put in your engine and then, and we're pushing water. It's only at 130, oh, that's probably just because we got it so full it's pushing a little off the top. Yeah, the temp isn't even coming up yet. They only need a new seal on the radiator cap. Hopefully it's just making room. But anyway, yeah, those Pines winter fronts, they would open and close automatically on some of the fancy ones. Quit pushing it out the cap now. We need wipers. So we can clean that stuff off. And maybe some uh, newer tires. I think these ones are a little square. Probably uh, wouldn't hurt to get an alignment of sorts as well. Yeah. According to this speedometer, it says we're doing about 45. Seems like that's a pretty happy for it. Let's check you all. Speedo app on the phone. I would say it's probably a little bit low. We're probably doing 50, 55. Temp is still sitting on 130 and we've already got a few miles, so I think we resolved it. I don't remember this thing doing this death wall. It's not really a death wall, it's just chatter. Yeah, sure enough, 45 is about... 51 mile an hour, just a little slow. I'm guessing it's got probably 411 rear. Some 354s would be sweet in the back, do a little bit better highway speed. And this four speed in this thing is, I'm sure I said it earlier in the video, this video is obviously a drug on for several months. But this four speed, four cylinder transmission is hot garbage. You gotta get a Nice three speed four top loader put up there. We're still sitting at 130 degrees. I am fairly certain that we have resolved our heating issue. Brakes are good on this thing. This thing, I bet when I started this video, we did not have the Model A cooler. Which, that car is a great car. Absolutely love it. No complaints. But this pickup with the flathead and the hydraulic brakes is an absolute Ferrari. This thing is like a road course car compared to that Model A. Double horsepower, like I said, the hydraulic brakes. Just handles better. Sits a little bit lower so it doesn't have all the body roll. The other thing is, this thing's like driving a crew cab pickup compared to that Model A. There's like so much more room in here, which is strange when you go from a coupe to a pickup. So much roomier is in this thing but again the model a pickup is way smaller than this thing so in those five years between 31 and 36 created a lot more real estate in the cabs people got bigger cars got bigger heck yeah she's running nice and cool ain't even moving up just gotta get a water 
Arco gasket and fix that leak. This thing is ready to go. I'll flush her a couple more times to get some coolant in it. What do you think, Dal? This thing's pretty good, huh? I'm excited to run the mail on this thing. We did it a few times, but that was about the extent of the distance you could push it without all the coolant all over. It was nasty, rusty coolant. At least what's frothing out the radiator now is clean because it would just turn the windshield red and the firewall and everything. Yeah, not good. Hopefully we get this heating resolved, then we can put the hood back on it and set it. Can't forget it, right, Doc? recover from this. <laughs> so cold that the water that seeped out the radiator cap has frozen to the grill shell. Yeah. 20 degrees is all it takes in a 15 minute test drive. Yeah, it really varies the speed as I was, you know, running 4550, it got up to 190, but now that I slow it down, it drops right down to 130. I'm running 35 miles an hour now. But like I said, we got those washers and up radiator hose. Maybe we'll pull those out and see. Uh, worst case scenario, I guess we gotta get that radiator checked out too. But we gotta fix that water leak and see what 
she does. This is the part that I hate about projects. This is why everyone's like, why don't you finish projects? And I get to this point, the home stretch where it's all the little piddly stuff and the bugs to work out. And it takes so much time and I'm already burned out and it's stuff that doesn't make good content either. So if I don't want to do it, you guys don't want to watch it. But here we are. We did say we were going to try to finish some projects in 2023. This is the last day of 2023. It's Sunday, the 31st. And this has been like an ongoing 10 year project. I started this project, well, 10 years ago is when I started and I bought this thing probably 12 or 14 years ago. Or we can set this one off and get it redone. 
pressure is, is down to flathead operating range, kind of like the O in operating. Yeah, that's where the flathead oil pressure is around. But temp's still sitting at 130. I think we can say we resolved it. We could go do some donuts because uh, it's super icy. How about that stuff? It's too icy to even slide sideways. Can't get enough speed to whip it around. Don't worry, my yard is uh, much like I talked about earlier, and uh, all the snow and ice and water turned to slush, and I drove around the yard, and now there's ruts everywhere, and it's frozen rock hard. Here's our Generac 35 kW generator. She's a 19. 99 model with a 4.3 v6 vortex powered by propane dual stacks and tick ticks i'm kind of excited about it I'm not gonna lie I'm not looking forward to losing the power again but at the same time kind of am yeah man, if we put a heater in this thing maybe sealed up the pedals and the steering column hole and the windshield maybe put some door panels on it and some carpet you could almost drive this thing in the comfortably. What is comfort anymore? Is that fun? You like the Ford pickup? Yeah, that's a good pickup. The Warden's a good pickup dog. Just like you's a good dog, you's a good dog. Except for you clean the bottom of somebody's semi with your back. How about? Your resolution for 2024 is to not get so dirty, not roll in so many stinky critters, which is pretty good. We didn't roll in a lot of fecal matter this year. Well, there you have it, boys and girls. The Duff Dog and I diagnosed the overheating issue on our Ford Flathead. Uh, hopefully this helps some of the other folks that have overheating issues, uh, especially this kind of aimed at foreign flatheads, but a lot of this carries over. It doesn't matter if it's a 235 Chevy 6, a Slant 6, Leaning Tower Power Hillside Hemi, 440 Chrysler, late models, small block Chevys, all that stuff. But rust, that was our culprit. Years and years and years of neglect and probably just running straight tap water and this thing is what led us to it. So hope that helps you. I hope you all have a happy, prosperous, healthy, fun-filled 2024. Happy New Year from the Duff Dog and I in the Warden. So thank you very much for watching. If you'd be so kind, go check out our website, mortski.com. Get yourself a fleece beanie. Get yourself the new, uh, why, do I, why can't I think of the words? Hoodies, hoodies. Go, go check out the new hoodies. Uh, I think we're running 15% off all orders, $20 or more. These hoodies are more than $20, so you automatically get 15% off. But Thank you very much for watching. Go check that out. We appreciate all of your support in 2023. We hope you stick around and stick with us through 2024. Watch the videos, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that great stuff. We are on Instagram. There's the Mortsky Repair fan group on Facebook. That's where we're going to have the uh, competition for the uh, grungiest hat competition. Make sure to get your ball cap at Mortsky.com and uh, get her worn in for... Uh, Cinco to Drinko, and then get your pictures on there. We're going to give away some great prizes, so uh, go check that out. What else we got? We got Patreon. We got, you know, email. You want to send us an email? Uh, Morsky Repair at gmail.com. What else am I forgetting? More rides. We got to go for more rides in 2024. So remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you are having fun. Ford Flat, it's mostly fun, except for when you're on the side of the road overheating. Been there, done that. Not so fun. All right, on to the next one. Oh, we still got to get a pinion seal, axle bearings and that thing, and then we'll talk about that thing later. And we got to wrap everything up in the pricks. What a Pontiac action coming in 2024, I got a feeling. Pontiacs? They your thing? Maybe not so much.
So it's Christmas Day, it's raining. Duff is a swamp donkey. We got white lightning on the lift for Christmas Day and she's sitting a little cattywampus, more than usual. So if you're not familiar with white lightning, this is my 1962 with a 63 grill, Chevrolet, short bed, big back window, 235, six cylinder, three speed overdrive. It's kind of a crap box, but it's presentable that I've been driving the snot out of it in the last uh, couple months because it's pretty good with a heater. It gets terrible fuel mileage, so it's you're always putting fuel in. But anywho, I was walking out to the garage that it was sitting in, and I was going to go out and put my boots on, and I heard a bang! And I'd driven it the night before to go get Duff from my parents because they were watching him while I went and had Christmas with my college roommate's family. And anywho, if this thing's got torsion bars and they're turned way down to get it nice and low, and now something's dragging on the ground and it looks torsion bar related. So let's get it in the air and see what it is because this thing's got to go to Elite Collisions the day after Christmas. It's Christmas Eve today. Tomorrow's Christmas. The 26th, it's got to go there and they're going to fix the bedside for me. So I can't drive it there like this. I probably just going to haul it anyway because I don't have, I need to ride back. So let's, long story short, let's get this thing in the air. Check her out. Just what I expected, the lowest point on this thing in the middle of the vehicle you get high centered on is the adjuster bolts for the torsion bar suspension. If you're not familiar with torsion bar suspension, look it up. But anyway, it's basically just like a big long rod with a hex on the end, and then it's got a lever arm coming off of it, and there's an adjustment screw, and that's how you basically adjust your both your ride height and how the vehicle rides. So it's kind of neat because you can adjust your ride height and how it rides. Uh, it's 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 got its ups and downs, so I'll show you its downs. But anyway, that, that bolt was the lowest point, and I hit a pretty good, I hit it on, uh, I was leaving Napa Todd's place of employment, and they got kind of a, and if you're driving inclines with lowered vehicles, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that thing hit about as hard as I've ever felt. And so, yeah, let me show you what broke. So here's what I said is you know that that bar that hooks into the lower control arm You can see the hex that it slides into up there. That's the other thing with these if you ever got to remove them They get super rusty in there hard to get out and then this is basically a Torsional spring so they can flex in there and then there's this adjustment screw back here Which is pretty much backed all the way out and you can see how low they hang and how shiny it is and worn off from all the times that it's hit and then it's got this big cast iron arm that hooks on that hex again from the torsion bar. Same thing on this side. But those two are supposed to be connected. And I'm guessing I hit that thing hard enough the other night. But it kind of jarred it loose. So that's what I heard go bang was this thing. So I need a new one of these. But let me show you the bottom of this pickup. This thing was an amateur restoration years ago you can see all the screws sticking through the floor lapped metal huge gap between the inner rocker and the outer rocker like this outer rocker just kind of hanging on by hopes and dreams there's a ton of mud in it i mean it's presentable but cab mounts are rotten they didn't put them in there they should have it's 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 bad like why didn't you put that cab mount in there when you were doing it and then, like I said, they just lapped the metal here. So dirt's going to sit in there. It's going to rust out both sides. Again, they didn't tie the inner rocker to the outer rocker. They didn't replace that cab mount when they should have. And then this is the side that got whacked. They didn't do any body work down there. It's got a replacement cab corner. The gaps are terrible. It's got a bunch of mud in it. Yeah, it is what it is. But... Still a presentable pickup. It's a good driver. But here's the problem I got with this pickup. These got a box frame on them. You know, you can see all that dirt sits in there and somebody's cobbled it together before. But I, it used to have a hitch on it. Just kidding. It still has a hitch on it. And I put something on there that I shouldn't have. And it tweaked the frame. It's kinked right in there. And then, yeah, on this side, it's kind of Bluetooth, just held by hopes and dreams. The pickup needs exhaust as well. Yeah, so I'd like to find a 60, 
think 63 to 66 frame and then put disc brakes and stuff on it but then it snowballs into v8 and overdrive and fuel injection and moving the fuel tank and everything so hopefully we can just find a torsion bar bracket and fix that and i don't know what we're gonna do for now to get this thing transported i bet we can just stick a two by four in there you can see where it's been rubbing on the bump stops this thing stops steers drive it drives really good she's gutless gets terrible mileage i don't think i've ever put shocks on it i put the overdrive in it i had the engine out and put a gear timing gear in it because that's what killed it and then uh, at that time i swapped that transmission i lowered it with some lowering springs in the back and then turned the torsion bars down the front and then i put a couple sets of tires on it and that's about it i just drive the crap out of this pickup takes a lick and keeps on ticking it needs a couple of new pieces of wood in the bed floor anywho i'm gonna see what i can come up with for that but i was afraid that's what happened long long term this thing needs a frame but where do you quit like i said the body ain't great the engine's gutless so there you go white lightning things What did you find? Huh? An OBS torsion bar and the torsion bar from the old crew cab factory. No, not a factory conversion. It pays to keep your junk, kids. It's a snowy, nasty mess. I had to drive to the old shop to get it and dig through the junk pile. The gift that keeps on giving. So it pays to uh, keep everything, kids, as long as you're organized. Like I said, this is that 88 to 98. I made a pickup box trailer. And that was the front end that we stuck underneath that 54 Ford crew cab just to make it roll around. And this was out of like, I think it was a 62? Yeah, should be the same. It's three quarter ton though, so I'm hoping they'll interchange, but they might not. And I don't know if these are the same size either, but hopefully we can make something work. Right, Duff? All right, let's get out of here. So if you're wondering how we got that torsion key off that torsion bar, this is the, what is it, CP Astro Pneumatic AP 4980. This thing is crazy. It's got like a, what, 4.9 inch shank on this. So you got to buy special anvils, but that thing didn't even grunt taking it off. We heated it up with the old uh, Smith blowtorch. And then we got these other ones from a stash, but three quarter ton 62s are inch and three quarter i think ours are inch and a half and then 88 to 98 are inch and five eighths so they're not gonna work are they duff and we got a lot of water coming into the shop you want to show them what's going on outside yeah about 3 30 yesterday christmas day we had a, a nice ice storm come in and a whole bunch of wind and we're out of power we're running off gen power i can only run half the lights in the shop because we turn them all it'll slug the generator we got to get a bigger generator because apparently this is a yearly thing can't run the air compressor so we can't run the waste oil furnace so we got that hanging propane resin ore back there and we got floor heat in the back so we're good we got internet in the house and the fridges are going and the freezers and the furnace is going and internet so duff and i just been hanging out relaxing but there's all kinds of water and rain and slush that came so we gotta get this moved away from the shop so it ain't running in here. The flag is frozen stiff to the pole. Let's see if we can show you. On the other side of my pickup over here, excuse the sound quality, because we got the generator going. We got me and Duff walking through the slop. It's like 33 degrees. Look at this. That's what we gotta deal with in Podunk. We got a lot of ice falling off the shop. There's the Highline wires dropped off. There's a pole snapped off in between these two. I ain't left the yard, but the neighbors tell me that there's like five snapped off in here. So. There's like an inch of ice on everything. There's people out braving it driving by. Like I said, it's warm enough right now that it's melting. 
Look at that. Look at how thick that is. That's like an inch and a quarter, inch and a half thick. And it's on everything. The sheet that was on the house garage door. Bernie is caked, but there's standing water. So we gotta take care of that before it freezes. Look at my tow pig. Had that thing all loaded up, go to the body shop. And it's just covered stuff. Just freaking covered. Everything in the yard. Or 8.1. Came out and knocked the ice off of the antennas before they broke off. I don't remember if Bernie had an antenna, but it's gone now if it did. It's just terrible. Yeah. I don't know what we're gonna do, Doc. So anyway, I'm gonna jump in the skid steer, put the bucket on, try to move some of this around to make it manageable. When we get back to uh, our normal daily lives. Because uh, they're talking snow either later today or tomorrow. And if we get snow on top of this ice, it's gonna be bad. And I gotta run to town in the old expedition, get some fuel, that thing burns about I don't know, half, three quarters, about three quarters of a gallon an hour. So I think it's like an eight or a 10 gallon tank. So every five, six hours for sure, got to go fuel that thing up. So yeah, if you're living in uh, New Mexico or Arizona or California or Texas right now, enjoy it. But this weather does keep the riffraff out. Don't it Duff? No riffraff. Peter Cottontail. Duffers, did you catch? Peter Cottontail. Now I gotta tell the little kids that Easter's canceled. This thing's gonna be a dirty mess, and so are you. Come here, show us your brown nose. Show us how proud you are of your brown nose. Such a proud puppy. Well, hopefully that allows the water to run off that way and not into my door. Maybe I'll take a shovel and clean out a path there. I don't know how we're gonna get into a bunch of these vehicles if they're parked with the doors facing the south, like the Suburban and White Lightning. There ain't no way you're getting in the doors on that side. I had to shovel a little snow here. All the water in the yard runs to right there and then it's gotta go out that way. So I really wanted that cleaned out to get that water out of here so we don't have an ice skating rink. God, look at your nose. You're such a goof. Good job catching that rapid though. I know you've been after him all fall. All right, I'm gonna go inside and pack some orders because they gotta go out, even if the mail is probably here. What are we doing now, Duff? You big rabbit hunter. We need some 
petrol to keep that generator going, keep the lights on, you know, Tom Bodette style. We'll leave the light on for you. And the mail's got to go. And in here, there's some chunks of Mopar headers. So shout out to you guys who ordered a beanie cap and uh, requested that I send you a chunk of uh, 383 Mopar big block headers, huh? Old Duff wants to go for a ride. He likes the expedition. And Duff gets to go for more rides if we ship more stuff to you. So get your swag at Morski.com. These freaking beanies are the cat's pajamas fleece. Mm, it's like a wonderful girl just kissing into your ears, whispering sweet nothings the whole time you're wearing it. Right? Yeah, they're good. We got other stuff too. If you're not into, if you're like in New Mexico and you don't have to worry about stuff like this and beanie caps, we got regular ball caps too, and decals, and banners, and magnetic screwdrivers, and magnetic cancus, everything you need. If we don't got it, you don't need it. You want to open the overhead door since we lost the clicker for this door? We need a door expert to figure out some clickers for us around here. I'm just leaving the post office here. Ooh, got my Marty report for the 71 Ford and Calypso Coral. We got a bunch of trees down in town here. Big mother truckers, huh, Duff? Yeah. All right, let's get some petrol. And get back in the shop and get to work. This is the line coming into the farm. You can see that one's sagging, so it's just about touching the ground. Let me get up here, and there's looks like three poles in a row snapped off, and then there's another pole up by my place. Right there, they're touching the ground. The problem with all this wet slop is the trucks are sinking out of sight in the mud because the ground never froze up. Look at that thing just snapped off the splinters. That was a new one last year. This one looks like an old pole. These two right here are, were new last year. They're pretty crooked, that one is. A lot of weight on them wires. a new one these are old ones but they don't have a very large distance to span you can see the snapped off wire hanging on that one this wire is just about touching the ground and this one is touching the, I've never seen one where they actually will touch the ground and then uh, the next one in this string snapped off and there's another one up by my place so yeah it's gonna be a while I think I checked in in the region that I'm in right here, whatever, the township I'm in, I think there's uh, 33 out of 35 homes are without power, so yeah, it's not a very good percentage. I wonder who the lucky two are that didn't. Is the semi truck stuck back there? Yep, there he is. He uh, t picked a bad spot to take a break. Looks like he's stuck and there's, no, nope, I don't have anything that's going to pull him out. I don't want to try because probably just break something, eh, Duff? XPO Logistics, and I'm sure the towing company out of Oaks is 25 miles away. I'm sure they're uh, booked up, too. I'm sure there's a lot of vehicles in the ditch. We got groceries, huh, Duff? We got chips, sodas, we're good to go. And some petrol. I don't really like hauling uh, gas cans inside of SUVs, but I also didn't want to drag anything else out and run her through the salt. The expedition, we don't care about the sixth grade. Ran some battery powered lights over to Mrs. Pookie so the farrier can shoe his horses. His horses? Her horses. Now we got handsome Rob hooking him up with a generator. Ford owner says, toe's great. Let's do this. The old wind power. Where's this made? Newton, Iowa. Looks like it's on some old Mopar chassis. You ready to do this? You gonna help? You big electrician dog? How am I gonna see out that? Duff can jump out it though. So I guess we're gonna back this thing into his building over there and I can't see the, oh man, got a locker and four dig. Can't see that little tiny trailer. Expedition thing, just open the hatch. Hey, how's that snowblower coming? Got a BMW in the garage, but doesn't have a generator. What a loser. Poor old combine snowblower just hanging out. Didn't even get to do a cold start on the 40, already had her running. 
we gotta take the scraper off this thing so we can use the PTO. I swear I gotta do everything around here. Let me get the mesothelioma. This place is not proper ventilated. Properly? It's not really designed for No? For cold starts? Take the park brake off. Put it in gear. Come on. We got things to see and people to do, handsome Rob. I remember the first time I ran a tractor. You didn't make it very far. Why don't you drive it outside so we can breathe in the fumes out there? Then we're laying in the fucking snow. No, there's no we. I'll be laying in You can lay a chunk of an international snowblower side down and lay in that. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Wiley Township Creeper right there. I guess he had to take the hitch off to put his little blade contraption on. So now we gotta put the hitch back on. Get in there real nice and deep like. That's it, boy. Get in there nice and deep like. Lick his face while he does it, Doc. Yeah, yeah. Get, the, get away from me, Doc. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, help him out. Put your mouth right on his nose. So my generator is gasoline powered. You can get them, like permanent ones hooked up your propane. That's what Bobber's got. You can get them diesel, natural gas, whatever. This one's gonna run off the PTO of the tractor. So it's my first time being around one of those. We'll see how it works. Well, handsome Rob and I were talking. We should take one of these and mount like a big block Chevy to it to run it. Probably wouldn't need that. You could probably have like a four cylinder Iron Duke engine or something, but run it off the BMW wheel. We made a cord, plug it in there, plug it into this existing outlet. Probably not the right way to do it, but it's, it's what Rob wants to do. All right, hitch is hooked up, PTO is hooked up. This is a 540 PTO. There's also a thousand, I guess it's RPMs. And then you just spin her up till you get her in the green. And there's your breaker. And uh, this thing's 12 kW. So it should run everything he needs here. He'll get his heat back on anyway. His power went out about one o'clock day after Christmas so day and a half ago I got her hooked up you get it yay oh, you, you're good at putting tight things in the small holes I spit on it yeah good you're ready for the zombie apocalypse out here with the uh, fuel eh or are they all empty well, I suppose every time you go to work you just siphon them full oh yeah I am. you are a true uh, Canadian I suppose this heater is the same Singer sewing company that makes their sewing machines. Sure looks hooked up to me. Be sure to get your fleece beanie cap at Mortsky.com. Don't support the bad hair day caps that handsome Rob's wearing. Hey, this was a gift. Yeah. yeah. You, a Christmas gift, a special That's gift. what your dad told your mom too, but that was a lie. Keep my mother out of this. You can rip on my father all you want. Not my mother. Jesus. Come on. The second watches the show. You know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, that's true. I learned at the hands of the master. Start the fires and smoke the tires? I don't know. I'm just gonna keep my distance from this whirly bird PTO thing. Can you see the gauge from in the cab? Yeah. Oh, it's your hearing that's no good. Your sight's okay. He already cut his finger off today, so he's got that going for him. Everything he owns needs one of these slow-moving vehicle decals. Oh, he's climbing. See if we can 
Pepper, right? What do we call that? Rabbit stew, hoss and pepper? Man, you are a glorious animal. So pretty. Look at how frosty she is today. Oh, snow last night. Oh yeah, real glorious. The old 4634 is just barely idling away. Probably better grease them you joints so. though. It's like we knew what we were doing. Almost. Giddy up. Wow. Now you don't have to use the va the battery powered lady parts jiggler. Duff is so bored hanging out with us. He has resorted to carrying a tennis ball around. And we don't we don't play fetch, do we, Duff? Bring it here. Bring it here. That is about the extent of our fetch playing. Keep away. All right. Yeah, this is why we don't play fetch. Can I have it? Can I have it? No, oh, no, got it. Ready? He'll do that about twice and then he's like, this is stupid. I'm never getting this ball again. See, kind of like that. You got the zoomies or what? Yep, no. We don't fetch, do we? Go get it! Yep. We're not a fetching dog. He's pretty fast though. Even though he's all fat this winter. I guess I shouldn't talk. Alright. Let's go back to the shop and do some real work. All right, next dilemma. I'm gonna try to deliver white lightning into the body shop. Got enough ice off the Suburban thought out and it's uh, stuck on the ice. So we got Bernie out doing Bernie things. We gotta knock the ice off of everything in the yard. So hammer's your best friend. We gotta get these blocks out of here. Cause Bernie just wants to slide. Look at how thick this ice was. I should get a tape measure. I mean, it's melting a little bit today, but that stuff's inch and a quarter thick. I was on all the wheels till we started spinning. All right, Bernie's gonna take her. I was gonna try to push it with the Bobcat or pull with that, but we're gonna use a controlled pull on Bernie here. God, that thing is good. What do you think about that, Duff? Old Bernie walked her right out of there. Just put that thing in neutral and those Rover Claw 235.85s. Plus you got the weight of the Suburban. I picked that up a little bit. Just drug it out of there, no problem. Should probably knock some of this ice off so we don't send it through somebody's windshield. Look at that stuff. Cripes. Duff, go get the hammer. That's what I should do is just whack all the ice off all my vehicles in the yard with a hammer and really give the body shot something to do. This thing is good. This thing's pretty good too. I like it. All right, I'm going to knock some ice off. Money shot right there, folks. Buy us BD cap on Mortski.com and we'll ship this hubcap shaped piece of ice to you in a bottle. Who sings that song? Message in a bottle. That's a good tune. We're gonna have to fire that up when we back to the shop. Now we're just like a kid in a candy store. Putting dents in our pickup.
this will go through somebody's windshield now. Look at that! Can't even kick it off. But wait, there's more. Where's, where's, let's get the license plate. There she is. Woo! Oh, that's a good one. I bet that one had the Chevrolet script molded into it. That's what we should do next uh, ice storm. We should charge admission and people can come knock ice off cars. Okay, that would be a terrible idea. It'd be fun for people, but I could just see all the dents and slips and trips and falls. Bad idea. Hopefully next time you guys see this thing, this hooey is no longer there. All right, enough screwing around. Wait, there's the Suburban. We gotta get to work. So satisfying. Isn't that what the kids say? Break the back window on the tow pig, that'd really make my day. Do you want to build a snowman? Even when the power's out. It could be a lot worse, man. We could be up to our butts holes in snow. Bleh, 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 bleh